How's it going, everyone? So in my last couple of videos, I talked about Bill and Ted on the big screen with Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure and Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey, and we'll get to Bill and Ted Face the Music later on. But first, I thought we could take a look at Bill and Ted's relatively short-lived time on the small screen. After the success of Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, we got a Saturday morning cartoon called Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventures. And I have very vague memories of watching the show as a kid. I don't remember much about it. I don't really remember if I liked it or not. So re-watching this as an adult, I'm pretty much going into it with an open mind. And I was able to track down a DVD copy of the show, although you'll note it is a best of because for some reason they did not include five episodes from season one. Not sure why, but they didn't. However, I was still able to watch those missing episodes through... <clears throat> alternate means, and I'm pretty much approaching this as if season one and two were two different shows, because for all intents and purposes, they were. They had the same title and the same characters, but they aired on different networks, they were produced by different studios, and they even had different casts. The first season aired on CBS in 1990 and was produced by Hanna-Barbera, and it looks pretty much like you would expect any Hanna-Barbera cartoon to look. The quality of the animation is pretty good for the time. The characters move exactly like you would expect. Anytime they have to run a long distance, they got those trademark recycling backgrounds. And interestingly enough, they actually used some sort of computer animation to portray the circuits of time. It looks primitive as hell by today's standards, but still, I thought that was kind of cool. And one thing I did find funny was they somehow managed to make the Wild Stallions look even more pathetic in the show than they did in the movie. Like, their guitars are literally falling apart. Bills doesn't even have a neck strap, he's got a piece of rope around it. The show's theme song was decent, although one thing they did was they threw in Bill and Ted saying a bunch of their catchphrases, like, Excellent! or Most Outstanding! Bill and Ted's Most Excellent Adventures! Most triumphant! After hearing that three or four times while re-watching the show, that did start to get a bit old. One thing I did appreciate about the first season of the cartoon is they got cast members from the movie to reprise their roles. Alex Winter, Keanu Reeves, George Carlin, all of them are back as Bill, Ted, and Rufus, and a couple of lesser characters as well. Bernie Casey, who played their history teacher, Mr. Ryan, is now... Vice Principal Ryan, so I guess he got a promotion. And of course, Winter, Reeves, and Carlin all knew these characters very well by this point, so having them involved in the show definitely helped. They still have the same time-traveling phone booth, although the antenna now spins whenever they're traveling through time, which was kind of a nice touch. They did have to make a few minor changes from the movie. Given that it's a Saturday morning cartoon, they did have to tone a couple of things down. Not that the movie was overly explicit to begin with, but, you know... On broadcast television, Bill cannot exactly call someone a medieval dickweed. Ted is still occasionally threatened with being sent to military school, but now instead of Oates Military Academy, it's Green Military Academy. I'm not sure why they made that change. They also had to change the Circle K, I assume for trademark reasons. It is now the Cozy Corner, both words spelled with Ks. Although there is one episode where Bill still refers to it as the Circle K. I'm not sure how they got away with that. Story-wise, like a lot of shows of that time period, there wasn't really an overarching plot. Each episode's very self-contained, but they all follow a similar theme to the movie. Every episode, Bill and Ted have some problem that inexplicably can only be solved by time travel, so in the booth they go. And they travel through various points in history and learn some valuable lessons along the way. They also occasionally do some things that could have serious repercussions on the present day, but don't because reasons. For example, they apparently foiled the assassination attempt on Julius Caesar. Also, according to this show, Bill and Ted started the American Revolution because... Why not? So after re-watching the first season as an adult, I do think it's kinda hit and miss, which is honestly true of most cartoons I grew up with. There was one kind of meta joke, I think, in the second episode where Rufus is in a record store and he finds a George Carlin comedy album and says, ah, now this looks good. I did enjoy that. One really funny line happened in an episode where they went back in time and met the Pilgrims and one of them is like, ah, at last we are free from hate and prejudice. 
Ah, natives! They also go back to meet Leonardo da Vinci and stuck in a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles reference, which I think they were able to get away with because they happened to be on the same network at the time. And a few of the jokes were surprisingly dark for a kid show. Like when they go back and meet Julius Caesar, there's a point where they're all sitting down to dinner and Caesar calls for a food taster and one of the guards comes up and says, he didn't make it through lunch, sir. Oh. Okay, so we just killed someone off, off screen, but still, wasn't expecting that. There's also an episode where they meet Lady Godiva as she's riding along on a horse, and as soon as she showed up, I thought, they're not actually gonna go there, are they? And then Bill and Ted end up accidentally disrobing her, and I'm like, wow. They went there. They don't show anything, of course, because, you know, kids show, but still, the fact that they went there at all, that was surprising. And one of my favorite moments came in the episode Model T for Ted, and the basic plot for that episode is Bill and Ted are on a quest to purchase the new Iron Maiden album, and I actually went and looked this up, and it turns out, at almost the same time this episode aired, like within a week, Iron Maiden's No Prayer for the Dying was actually released. I don't know if that was just a happy accident or if they planned that, but that was kind of cool. Not everything the show did was great, however. In the very first episode, they go back and meet Marco Polo, and for some reason, he sings all of his dialogue badly. Awake, awake, and so I am awake, and you boys are in me, I will do. That got old real quick. There are also a lot of anachronistic jokes and dialogue which make the show's portrayal of history very inconsistent. Sometimes when they go back, they meet people who inexplicably seem to know what a phone is. Sometimes they don't. Why? I don't know. They also get a lot of history just plain wrong. Like, according to this show, Paul Revere made the Liberty Bell. What? The show also thinks Francis Drake and Grace O'Malley were an item or something, and in real life, I don't think the two of them ever actually met. They also meet Columbus in one episode, and I'm sure you can guess where they're going with that. Columbus did not prove the world was round, you idiots. But I think the strangest one was when they went back a few hundred years to Transylvania and met the actual Count Dracula who, of course, did not exist. Now, Vlad the Impaler existed, and he was possibly the inspiration for Bram Stoker's character, but they don't meet Vlad the Impaler, they meet the actual vampire Dracula. What? Also, the voice actor who played Dracula decided to do kind of a Jack Nicholson voice for him, which was an interesting choice. There are also a few continuity gaps with the movie. Like in one episode, Rufus has come back to present day San Dimas to get some bowling shoes, which he needs for some stupid reason. But the reason he's coming back in time to get them is bowling has been outlawed in the 27th century, which directly contradicts the movie. One of the key points about why the future is so great, according to Rufus's opening monologue, is bowling averages are way up. And now you're telling me bowling is outlawed? Come on. There's also one episode where the princesses, Joanna and Elizabeth, show up, but apparently they are still living in medieval England. Why did they go back? Also, their father is still trying to marry them off against their will. Again, why did they go back? Overall, I would say the quality of this show was about on par with other cartoons from that era. It didn't always hit, but it had a few good moments and it was a fun trip down memory lane at least for season one. Season two, however, who oh boy. They moved the show from CBS to Fox, they got a new theme song. Instead of being produced by Hanna-Barbera, it was now produced by Deke, which is the studio that caused so many immature children like myself to giggle incessantly because <laughs> it sounds like dick. I think the studio was originally founded in France, so it probably didn't occur to them that that may not be the best choice of names, but what are you going to do? But anyway, one thing that I noticed when I started watching season two is the animation quality went considerably downhill from the Hanna-Barbera days. They kind of sort of tried to mimic the look from season one, but they never really got there. Basically, it looked like season one, but with half the budget, which may have actually been the case for all I know. 
They also got a brand new cast. Bill and Ted are now voiced by Evan Richards and Christopher Kennedy, the same guys who would go on to play them in the short-lived live-action TV show that I think was filmed around the same time but didn't air until the following year. And unfortunately, they are not as good as Winter and Reeves. Winter and Reeves sound like Bill and Ted. Richards and Kennedy sound like two guys doing a really bad Bill and Ted impression. And another big change they made was the phone booth could do more than just travel through time. It can also travel into other things. There's one episode where they somehow beam themselves into a TV show, and there's another one where they shrink down to microscopic size and travel into someone's body. Ew. So basically, they had already run out of ideas for the time travel gimmick, as further evidenced by the fact that in a couple of episodes, they revisit historical figures that we already met in season one, like Leonardo da Vinci and Columbus again, who still did not prove the world was round, you doofuses. But I think the biggest reason why season two really doesn't work is there's rarely a reason for Bill and Ted's travels. They seem to be traveling through time and other stuff just for the hell of it. In season one, they always had a reason for traveling through time. Not always a good reason, mind you, although Bill and Ted usually thought it was, but still, they had a reason. In season two, they're traveling through time because... They're bored, I guess. Like in one episode, they travel into a TV show that was, I guess, a parody of Leave it to Beaver and somehow ended up ruining the show. And I'm thinking, okay, so they ruined an old sitcom. And, like, there's not much in the way of stakes here. So overall, while season one was a fun little trip down memory lane, season two was a chore to sit through. I am not at all surprised that the show failed to catch on and was canceled after that. If you're interested in watching the show, the DVD, I believe, is out of print. You might be able to find a used copy somewhere, or you can still find the episodes online through... <clears throat> alternate means. Season one might be worth a watch, but season two, I wouldn't bother. It's just lame. And that wraps it up for Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventures. Until next time, take care.